good morning children how are you today i'm going to start the first poem of our english book before we start i would like to throw light what i have taken in the last session in the last session i have taught the first chapter ivan story question and answers and i hope so children you all must have written question answers and you have learned the question answers uh, i hope you must have done my homework also i have given it homework to you all must have done my homework now before i start my session i would like to throw light on the parts of speech last time i have taught you parts of speech the first kind i have taught that is noun in noun there are five kinds i have taught you the proper noun and the common noun today i am going to teach you the next two one okay abstract noun is the name given to a quality a concept an idea an experience or a feeling abstract noun is what we can't see we can only feel it abstract noun is the name given to a quality a concept an idea an experience or a feeling abstract noun can only be felt we can't touch it for example truth kindness anger youth and darkness this only can be felt the next topic is collective noun collective noun is the collection of the things collective noun is the name given to a collection of people animal or things of the same kind together a collective noun is the collection of people animal or things for example when we keep all the flowers in one place in one place of the same kind so we call a bunch of flowers suppose we keep all our papers together then we call a bundle of papers suppose uh, some children are sitting in the class so we call a group of children and when the bees are together then we call a swarm of bees again you can see what is a collective noun a collective noun is the name given to a collection of people animal or things of the same kind when they are kept together then we call collective noun bunch of flowers bundle of papers group of children and the swarm of bees now children i am going to teach you the first poem of our english book the first poem is a laughing song laughing song has been written by william blake william blake was born in the 18th century he was a great artist as well as a painter he has written different kinds of literature he has written different kinds of poem and different different kinds of literature he has written and now in this poem he wants us to uh, teach us about nature william blake is a nature loving person he loves nature in this poem he is giving us an invitation he is giving us an invitation he is saying that come with me come and join and sing a song with me be happy be free from all your tension and worries and now i am giving an invitation to you come and join and sing a song with me so here children we are going to study about a laughing song poem okay now in the first stanza these are called stanza children the first stanza second stanza and third stanza here william blake wants to say that when the green woods laugh with the voice of joy and the dimpling stream runs laughing by here the kids is in the first sentence they telling us that green woods means the forest he says that here the green woods are laughing the forest are laughing and the the leaves the soothing and the calming voices of the leaves makes a very good laughter the poet experiences the the voice of the leaves he says the leaves make a different kinds of uh, of uh, voice and the dimpling stream runs laughing by dimpling means simple children a dimple a dimple what is meaning of dimple a dimple means a small depression on the cheek of a so he says he is comp- 
comparing this small kid with the stream. How he is comparing? He says that uh, that when the stream swims, the running flowing water. He says that on the stream, the waves are there. The waves are moving up and down. So he compares this that a dimple is there on the stream. This poem is a personified way. Personification of personified means to him. Personification means that this uh, the comparing with the non-living things with the living things. This is called personification. This poem is, a, is in a personified one. He, he sees the beauty of the nature and he says that, that I think that all these non-living things he can feel that these are the living things. He is comparing and he is finding the beauty in them. He says that life is beautiful, life is wonderful. Come leave your work, come and join with me, sing the song with me because life is full of fun and laughter. When the air does laugh with a merry witch and the green hill laughs with the noise of it, he says that the air passing from the forest is also laughing with, with me because I can feel, I can see that the air is laughing. And the green hill laughs. He says that the green hills, the hills, the mountains, and the air passing from that, I can feel the laughter. And I can see that all these non living things are having life in it. Now, the second sandwich. When the meadows laugh with the light green green, and the grasshopper laughs in the merry sea, he says that. Meadows. Here, here meadows means he's telling us that meadows means a land of green grass and where small plants also go there and they are having flowers also. He says that the whole green meadows is laughing with me and their lively green means they are full of, they are healthy, they are full of happiness and they are enjoying. When I see the see to the, the meadows, I think that they are laughing, they are looking at me and they are laughing. And the grasshopper laughs in the merry sea. He says that the grasshopper sitting on the leaves. The grasshopper is also laughing. When Mary and Susan and Emily, with their sweet round mouth, a uh, sweet round mouth, sing ha ha he. He says that there are few children that are playing there. Who are they? They are Mary, Susan, and Emily. These children are enjoying with the nature. So William Blake is giving us an invitation, come join with me, enjoy the life and he says that see how these children are enjoying in the, uh, in the forest and then he says that these children they are having a sweet round mouth and they are singing the song, they are singing ha ha he. Now the third stanza today. When the painted birds laugh in the sea, where our table with gems nuts is spread. Here the poet says that there are painted uh, birds. Painted birds with different kinds of birds are their children and the birds are of different different colors. Red, blue, green, yellow, different different types of feathers are there. So he says that different kinds of birds are there and they are also enjoying, enjoying my song. And he says that the, uh, the birds are sitting under the shade of a tree and on the ground he says that the table with cherries means the ground. The ground is full of cherries and nuts are spread there for the birds. So he sees the beauty of the nature. He says that this non-living things can give us the enjoyment. The life is full of fun and laughter. Come live and be merry. Enjoy with me. The poet says that I am giving an invitation to you. Come with me. Enjoy the nature. Because this nature is, is very wonderful. It's very pleasant. It's very beautiful. Come live and be merry and join with me. To sing the sweet chorus of Ha Ha He. He said, chorus means children here, a part of a song that is sung several times. The poet, uh, a part of the song that we sing several times in the song. But after the verse, that is called chorus. He says that, join, the, uh, join with me. I'm giving an invitation to you. Come and sing the song with me. So William Blake is very happy, he is taking the, he is enjoying with the nature because he sees that life is full of fun and enjoyment. So come with me, sing a song with me, 
and be happy. He says, he says in the last three four lines, you know, come, leave and be merry. Leave all your worries and tension. He is taking us, he is taking us from the cities to the major. He says that come, enjoy with me because life is very beautiful. Life is very wonderful. Come and join with me. And children, he in the last he says to sing the sweet chorus of ha ha he. He says, come and join with me, and you will find that the, the, the nature is very beautiful. So here in this poem, children, uh, we have studied three stanzas, and in these three stanzas, William Blake wants us to say that life is beautiful and life is very pleasant. Life is full of fun and laughter. And his this poem is a personi personified way. Personified way, way means children, he is comparing the non-living things with the living things. And he says that he finds the beauty. He finds the beauty in all these things. In the first stanza, he says in the forest, and then he says in the meadows, then he says in the uh, children's laughter when the leaves uh, blow, and different. And this when he finds beauty in the street. So like this, he says that life is full of enjoyment. So come, I'm giving an invitation to you. Come and join with me and be merry and be happy. In the last, he says, come and sing a song with me. Ha, ha, he. And in the last, two says, he's singing. And he says that, I feel that children are also singing with me. And in the last, he says, come, come with me. Enjoy the whole world because life is very beautiful. Life is very pleasant. So, come because nature is very, very beautiful. We are not at all having time for nature. He says, leave all your worries and tension and enjoy with me to find the beauty of the nature. I hope children, you must have understood this poem. Now, we will move on to question and answers. I am going to read the question from the book and answers have been here. How is the stream described in the poem? The answer, the stream is described as deeply referring to the ripples that are seen on the water. Here, the poet says that what is the meaning of stream? Here he says that what is the meaning of dimple? Dimpling. The stream is the stuff. Here I have explained it. Dimple means a small uh, depression on the cheek. Now here the poet is telling us that the as we are having a small depression on our cheek, like the seen like that, the waves that are moving on the stream. It's just like a dimple in the stream. Now the next question. What are the grasshopper and the birds doing? The poet is asking us what are the grasshopper, uh, what are the grasshopper and the birds doing? The grasshopper and the birds are laughing. He says that the grasshopper and the birds are laughing merrily in the green meadow and the shadow freeze. He says that, that the birds and the grasshopper both are laughing and they are very happy sitting on the green meadows and under the shadow of the trees. Third question to What is the speaker asking all of us to do? The speaker wants everyone to join in and sing in love melody. The poet says that I am giving an invitation to you. Come with me, join with me and just laugh. Be, be free from all your worries and tension. Enjoy the nature. What feeling is conveyed through the poem? Here the poet says that what is what feeling is there in the poem? The poem conveys joy and laughter. The, what is the poem uh, conveying us here? The poem is conveying us only joy and laughter. He says that only joy and laughter is in our life. That is the beauty of our life. And we can find this in the nature. Because other pleasures will not give us uh, uh, happiness. But only the nature can give us happiness. Life is full of joy and pleasure. Life is very pleasant. Now in the second question, children, think and answer this question. This is oral. I have not uh, written this one. This is only to think and answer. I will read the question as well. I will tell the answer as well. Do you think the speaker loves nature? What do you think, children? Yes. The speaker is speaker loves the nature. Because in the beginning I uh, only I told that the poet is a nature loving person. He loves nature. He finds a beauty uh, in, the, uh, in the nature. So, the question, the answer is the speaker loves nature. Give reason for 
poem answer. So what the whole like, poem I explain you? He has explained the poem in different different ways. He says that he finds beauty in everything. He finds beauty in the forest. Then he finds beauty in the stream. Then he finds beauty in the air. He says that the air that passes gives me a lot of laughter. Then he finds beauty in the green hills and the uh, and the mountain. Then he finds beauty in the meadows. He says that the meadows, the meadows, the Lively, they are very healthy and they are laughing at me. They are, they can be, they seem to be very beautiful. And that this he says that the grasshopper is also enjoying with me. Even the small children that they are playing, they are just enjoying the song. Ha ha he. And he says in the third stanza, even the painted birds. Painted birds means you know here, different kinds of birds, different, different colorful birds, they are sitting under the shade of the tree and they are enjoying with it. They are singing the song. They are full of uh, fun and happiness. And, and he says that the ground, the ground is full of nuts. The, the, the ground is full. It's like a table. And uh, on the table, cherries and nuts are spread. And the birds are enjoying the song. They are singing the song as well as they are enjoying the life. And in the last, the poet is giving us an invitation. He's giving us an open invitation. Come, join with me. Enjoy the nature and be happy and love the nature. So I hope understood the children, you must, you must have understood the poem. Let's move towards the words in words. Here are some words from the poem. Change their form so that they become verb, nouns or adjective. Affirmative. Now we have words. Word is a word is a noun. Okay? In the bracket is given. Now here you have to make it an adjective. First, I will tell you what is an adjective. Because I am teaching parts of speech, only one part I taught you now. I will explain in detail in the next session. But first, I will tell you what, what is an adjective. Describe it. The words that describe about the noun are called adjectives. The words which describe more about the noun are called adjectives. Here, the word written is words. So, words will be, we have to make it into adjective. Will be written. Laugh. Laugh is a verb. What is a verb? Action words are called. Here, laugh is a verb and noun is. We have to make it a noun. It's laughter. Run. Run. Action words are called verbs. Again, run is a verb and we have to make it to noun. Run or run. Both are answers. Sing. Sing is also a verb. Action words are called verb and noun. We have to make it to noun, song or sing. Now, paint. Paint is also a verb. And painting and noun. We have to make it to noun. So, here, children, I am talking you about a laughing song. Here, he says that life is very beautiful. So, I hope, children, you must have understood this poem. And now, I am I'm going to give you a very short one. This you have to do in your rough copy. I have taught you two kinds of noun that is, abstract noun and directive noun. So you have to find down five active down and five abstract down. And you will not find out, uh, you will not write the words what I have explained on the board. You will write your five different type of five collective noun and five abstract noun. Okay, children? Now I want children, you must have understood this poem. Learn the question answers also, write in a copy also, and now we will meet in the next session. Till then, goodbye, take care, be safe and be at home.